Okay, in this video, we are going to apply a depth of field to our shot using the Z defocus and the Z pass. If you'd like to follow along, you can open the file v21.nk in the Nukes directory. All right, let's look for a node called Z defocus. So I'll go to the blur menu here and I will come select Z defocus. And I will plug the image input to the main comb tree here. And I will plug my viewer after the Z defocus. And for now, everything is blurred. Well, maybe it's what you want, but no, this is not what we want here. We want to blur only things according to the distance. Well, for doing that, we need to specify what is the depth pass in our main tree. For now, we do have a depth pass that we merge here, but this depth pass is not in our main comb tree. So I will need to inject that depth pass in our main comb tree here. And for that, I will use a copy node that I will find in the channel menu here, copy, and I will plug the B pipe of my copy node to my main tree and the A pipe to the Z merge here. So maybe you remember we used that copy node to copy alpha in the previous course. Here we are going to use that copy node to copy the depth pass that we created here in the Z merge. So for that, I will come to the attribute of that copy node. And in the copy channel, I will replace rgba.alpha by depth.z to depth.z. So basically, I'm copying the depth channels here to the main pipe. Now, if I come back to the properties of my Z defocus, I will be able to adjust here the focal point. If you don't see the focal point, it's maybe because your overlay is toggled off and you can toggle it on and off using the Q key while your mouse is on the viewer. So I will take that little guy here and I will drag and drop it to that rock here, which I know is the closest from the camera. So I will drop it here. And now there we go. We can see that this rock is sharp. And as we go further in distance, things start to be blurry. Perfect. This is exactly what we want. Now let's see how we could use that Z defocus a little bit more. The first thing I'd like to talk about here is the math menu. And this is where you are going to choose what kind of depth pass is using to drive the Z defocus. And in our case, far equal zero is correct because we are using the new depth pass, which is mapped between one and zero, one being close to the camera and zero being the further objects. So far equal zero is correct. But for example, if we were using an Arnold depth pass, we will use the direct up there. Now, if you have a doubt regarding the math, you can simply hover your mouse on the top of the menu and that will give you a little bit more of explanation. Sometimes it's a little bit confusing, but don't worry, you'll figure it out. Now, if you'd like to set up precisely your focal point and your depth of field, you could come to that menu here, output, and you could select focal plane setup to be able to define where is your focal plane. Or you could use as well the layer setup to do the same thing. And the difference between those two guys, this one is displaying your image behind and this one is displaying the Z pass. I really like the Z pass because it gives me the sensation of volume and that's sometimes a little bit more easy to adjust my depth pass. Now, for example, let's see those rocks are sharp more or less because the red color means it's too close from the camera to be sharp and the blue color means it's too far from the focal plane to be sharp as well. Normally, when it's sharp, it's going to be the green color. And we are going to see that while increasing the depth of field. There we go. Now I'm defining what is exactly sharp. The green will be sharp 
the red will be too close to the camera and the blue will be too far from the camera. So you really can set up your depth, depth of field as you want. Of course, it won't be like sharp, blurred, sharp, blurred, right? It's, there is a transition between the, those areas like a real camera will do. But so you can really play with that and create the defocus you want. So let's go with that for now. I will just go back to the results here. And now, if I want to increase my depth of field, well, I can come to the size here and put a bigger value. For example, let's go to 20. Let's see what's going on. Wow, okay. So now you can really see that those guys are sharp, but everything else behind is blurred. Now, we put it a value of 20 on the size of our blur, but we do have another control here, which is called maximum. And this maximum is a sort of a clipping, a threshold for the size of our blur. For example, if I were to zoom on the background and if I were to put 15, then the size of the blur will be the same because the maximum here is 10. So if I were increasing that guy to 15, I will change now the size of my blur, of the maximum of my blur. So why do we use that maximum value here? Well, for two reasons. The first one is that the Z focus is a pretty heavy node to calculate. So it's very important here to have a threshold to use just in case of your computer is about to explode. Sometimes I will use a maximum value while I'm working in Nuke to spare a little bit of computer power. And just before rendering, I will increase my maximum value. The second reason we use that maximum value is to drive the difference of blur between the further elements and the one closest to the focal plane. So for example here, if I were to change the size, I will be able to increase the blur of my mid-ground element without affecting the blur, the maximum blur which is applied to my sky here for example. So let's, let's do a test by putting a size of 30. Just look at that part of the screen. And there we go. As you can see now, my elements are more blurred here, but the blur on my sky remain the same. And that will be a little bit like adjusting the aperture of your camera. Okay, so this is actually very useful. Those two ways of using that maximum value are pretty important. Okay, now there is another thing I'd like to show you about the Z defocus node. It's about how you could create a filter type to create some bokeh. And we are going to see that in the next video. See you there.